Nicolai Bailharts and Stacey Lee with you for breakfast at 10 minutes to 8. Well, we are heading for a top of 19 degrees today. Mm. Is that warm enough to hop in the beach? Hop in the beach. Hop in the water at the beach for a uh, swim? No. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. You might not be thinking about that, but consultation is now open on what the Hallett Cove Seaside Pool could and should potentially look like uh, when things will warm up a little bit. Chris H- Hanna is the Mayor of Marion. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning to you. So you're looking at, I think it's been described as a seawater-filled pool extending above the waterline. Does that mean the, the Bondi pool, kind of, if people can picture that? Well, the, the important thing with that naming is that it's not what most people think of as a sea pool. It's not going to be a tidal pool. And uh, this is because of a report that was done about three or four years ago now, the the beginning of this after somebody came up with the idea, maybe five years ago, uh, local MP David Spears, who was also Minister of the Environment, uh, picked up the idea uh, before the 2018 election uh, and the Department of Environment and Marine Council did a $50,000 study basically asking the question, can we build a pool at Hallett Cove uh, on the coast? And 171-page report said, yes, uh, you can. But it wouldn't be a total pool because there's so much muck that, that comes in with the stormy weather down at Hallett Cove. So it would be a pool potentially um, at the bottom of the cliff at Hallett Cove, uh, I mean, near the War Memorial, for those people who know the area, mm. but it wouldn't be level with the sea level. There would be a wall mm. between the pool and the sea. So it's, I think a lot of people still have the dream of a tidal pool. They've seen these things or experienced it somewhere. But it's uh, it's really a pool at the seaside. And so that's, that's, be- that's the concept. Because of the muck problem. Yeah. Um, both uh, animals, seaweed, sand, uh, the, the, the pool would literally uh, fill up with stuff after every storm event, uh, potentially. So uh, that's why it would be sea water pumped in, filtered, and uh, then that would be swimmable. Isn't the whole ocean a pool? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it is. And, and, I mean, probably what people in Hallett Cove do at the moment is drive up to Seacliff or down to Port Norlunga or something like that and have a swim in the, the ocean there. Or they can go to the Marion Pool, which is admittedly on the other side of the hill, uh, up at, uh, uh, yeah. you know, closer to the city. So I guess it's not a it's not a pool as we know it, an, an indoor pool where you've got to go somewhere and park the car and you go inside and all of that. It will be an outdoor pool filled with seawater, but not like the one that you usually see when you see the pictures of Bondi Beach, where the water flows in from the ocean. Stacey, you have described the concept very well. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can just elaborate on the process. So we had this report... It's now three or four years ago to say, yes, you could do this. Uh, then the, um, the Minister of the Environment and the, uh, the Department co-funded with Mar- Marion Council this next phase, which is to say, come up with a design. But we couldn't just go to a consultant and say, come up with a design. They would say, well, what's, what are you after? So that's the purpose of the current community consultation. What do people expect? What do people want? Are there any problems? Uh, once we have all of that, we give that to the consultant and say, OK, now come up with a design that more or less fits people's aspirations, minimises any problems and tell us what it would cost. So at that point, um, there's still no decision about whether there would be a, a seaside pool there. But at that point, at least we've got something concrete we can ask the, the government, we can ask the community about. So has there been some thought on maybe this is part of the process of, like, do you go 25 metres, do you go 50 metres, how many lanes do you go, all that kind of stuff? Exactly. There are, there are all of those options. The initial engineer's report said, oh, you, you could bang in a 50-metre pool there, no problem. Um, there's plenty of room, but... Um, there's a cost. You know, there are, there are multiple questions about that. That's right, including the cost. And what At is the cost? Stage, what is the budget that you've got? Oh, Marion Council has zero budget for it at this time, but um, when the consultant, the engineering consultant uh, a few years ago, put a figure to it, uh, it was around $5 million. I suspect you could double that figure now. Mm. Um, you know, construction costs have gone up hugely the last couple of years. So if you don't have any money, how are you going to pay for it? 
Well, uh, the point is it's it's not in Marion Council's budget. I mean, it began as uh, a state government idea um, under the previous government. So um, Marion Council would, of course, be looking uh, to others to fund it. Um, but, oh, so you know, Marion Council's going out for consultation on a project it can't afford. You, you're going to consult on a project and then go to the state government and say, hey, guys, can we have $10 million to build this pool? Well, there's not even a decision to do that, but I anticipate that's the sort of thing that would happen. Do you have to look at things like risk too? Is there a risk to council if someone drowns? I mean, it's a pretty blunt way to put it, but if someone drowns in that pool, is council responsible? Well, that's another very good question because um, the debate is yet to be had about, for example, whether there need to be lifesavers or not. Now, at the fantastic Marion Outdoor Pool that we've got, and that's, you know, fenced and uh, there are several different pools there. But, of course, we have lifesavers uh, every minute the pool's open. On the other hand, if people go for a swim down the beach, you know, there aren't necessarily lifesavers around. You can, mm. you can swim out as far as you like. Uh, depends how silly you are. Um, but nobody, nobody necessarily looks after you. Uh, so what, what happens if there's a structure built? Now, the, the legal liability of that is, is a live question, but... We haven't got to the point of resolving that because we don't know what sort of pool we're talking about. If we're talking about a, a one-metre-deep wading pool, uh, that's very different to uh, a 50-metre uh, Olympic-sized pool, uh, you know, where people are swimming up and down. Okay. So it's it's still early days in what has already been uh, a drawn-out sort of project. Josh Harkness has called in. Good morning, Josh. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Good. So you started the original petition to get this up and running. Yeah, that's right. Um, we set up a, a, a petition with the community and did some fly dropping and um, it really got momentum within the Hallett Cove and, and Marion area.